Interesting is that we'll know probably in the next two weeks, right? You're either going to bust through 65 and continue up, or it's going to stall out and then continue its way down and recorrect. Hello everyone today, our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about how in an August last year, he was among the few experts who envisioned a bearish scenario for Bitcoin since the asset's price was heading towards $50,000. Back then, the Americans said that based on the charts, BTC should surpass the $50K dollars milestone, but eventually will decrease to $18,000. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. For starters, a financial advisor always preaches long-term investing. The Oracle of Warren Buffett, if you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. The rules seem to change when making points about whether or not to own Bitcoin. It's often measured in quarterly returns instead of years, but how about we look at three and five year time horizons? The two year ROI of Bitcoin surpasses the eight year ROI of the S&P 500, which is telling considering how well the S&P 500 has done over the past decade. Now, what about risk? An investment that has drawdowns of to 93% in 2011, 85% in 2013, to 83% in 2017, and 72% YTD cannot be investable. The standard risk metrics like Sharp or Sortina ratios would show that right. Wrong. The Sharp ratio is the measure of risk adjusted, really volatility adjusted, returns. It's a way to measure how much return an investment generated for the risk, volatility, endured over some time horizon. Higher is better. Sortino ratio is a measure very similar to the Sharp ratio. The big difference is it does not penalize an asset for upward volatility as that volatility is not unfavorable. What do you notice? Even during one of the largest drawdowns in its history, Bitcoin is less risky than bonds over the last three and five years. Gold has also been the better diversification tool than bonds when comparing it to correlations to the S&P 500 and has a positive return. Gareth Soloway has made a number of correct calls this year. In May, I'm breaking them down because they're hard to keep track. There's so many. In May, when Bitcoin was still at around $56,000, he said it would go down to $30,000, retrace to $30,000. In two months, it hit 31. At that point, he said it would go back up to 52 before retracing. And in exactly three months, in September, it hit 52 before retracing. And now he's calling for potentially $20,000. So, the first questions I have for both of you, where is Bitcoin heading next? Let's start with you, Gareth. Okay, so being a chart guy, and I'm short term, so my long term views, you know, David, I've said long term, I do believe it's going to 500,000. Um, question is, how long is that going to take? Short term, being a chart guy, I have to focus on that $65,000 high that we recently hit in, I think it was in April. And as long as we stay below that, then technically this is a lower technical high. So again, one of the things I do is I, I take the emotion out of it. There's so much hype in Bitcoin, but you have to let the chart dictate your move. So as long as we stay below Bitcoin, I'm in the bearish camp in the near term, even though I'm bullish long term. So a couple things. Number one, Bitcoin began in 2009. 2013, we made a high of 1250. That was the first cycle high. 2017, the second cycle high of around 20,000. And here we are four years later. So remember, each one is four years. So what I'm saying is that as of now, four years later, we've hit 65,000. That stands out to me as the cycle high for this cycle, unless proven otherwise. Meaning that if we take out 65, then that wasn't the cycle high and we could still go higher. But again, the chart has to tell me that before I jump to that conclusion. As much as my gut or my emotion wants to say, yeah, let's do it, you know, let's rah, 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 charts are the king for me. My only concern, so we have this ETF on the futures that debuts next week. So right. you've seen this massive hype going into that. And if you look at when the, the Bitcoin uh, futures debuted, I think it was in 2017, that actually was the top and we actually saw, so here you have the Bitcoin ETF on based on futures debuting. Yeah, so I, I definitely wouldn't touch the ETF. Um, at a certain price point, I would look for an ETF that's based on Bitcoin itself. I would caution investors that 
understand what a futures-backed ETF is. It's going to go to zero always, all right? And this is scary, I know. But when you base an ETF on futures, there's a contract rollover. And let's say the current month is $10 and the next month is $11. So they have to sell the, the current month at $10 and buy the 11, which means you're, they're going to buy less each time, which means the value of that ETF is going to decline. So it's not going to happen overnight, but over the course of months and years, that ETF will always lose value, uh, which is why, honestly, I'm shocked that the SEC uh, approved this one of all of them. Um, personally, I think I that's agree. ridiculous. Because the average investor doesn't know that. They don't know that. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's what we're going to find out here. And what's interesting is that we'll know probably in the next two weeks, right? You're either going to bust through 65 and continue up, or it's going to stall out and then continue its way down and correct. So, so I, I, it, can, it will definitely have another winter. It's just a matter of is it now or, or like you're thinking in a six months. I don't know what, when no, you think next, that could yeah, have next I year. Mean, For the average investor, um, I think 10% is the right allocation. That might seem small uh, to a lot of people out there at this conference, but you have to remember, you know, you have people with millions and millions of dollars that are diversified. There's a lot of elderly, middle-aged people who are not going to feel comfortable investing with the swings that Bitcoin does. I mean, even the one that dropped, you know, 60 to 30 is a 50% drawdown. You can't have a huge amount of your portfolio. Now, if you're young, all right, you got 40 years till retirement. I think that's different. But again, anyone at my age, 40 years or above, probably 10% allocation right now is correct. Okay, before we move on to Florian, I got to ask them, what's the other 90%? Right now? You know I'm bearish on stocks. I do know so that, I, but, but they don't know that. Tell me. Tell me. All right, so, so there are certain areas, like I like China stocks right now because they're, they're very, they've been beaten down like crazy under these regulatory issues. But I think gold is a place you want to be. Even though Bitcoin always seems to be like anti-gold, I think there's a spot for both I'm, of I'm those. I'm just going to pause right there. Don't okay. you think Bitcoin replaces gold? I know that's a leading question. You're welcome to say no. I think it a, a huge chunk replaces gold, yes. But... But there, there absolutely is a place for the, in the next 20 years or so for gold to still go up hundreds of percentage points, which for me as an allocating investor, I do want to have exposure in gold and metals. Well, if gold goes up hundreds of percentage points, how much does Bitcoin go up? Once it gets down to 20, it's going to 500, so that's a lot. If I may jump in, just one of the reasons why I'm also a little concerned about over, overdoing it in, in Bitcoin itself is that we aren't necessarily 100% sure yet which cryptocurrency is ultimately going to be the, the ones that end up being that those top cryptocurrencies 10 years from now. So while Bitcoin looks like the dominant force, does Ether overtake it? Does Solana? I mean, there's so many and it's always rotating because it's such a new asset class that, again, if you're going to do it, maybe even diversify within cryptocurrency a little bit. That most likely Bitcoin is the dominant force, but there's still that 25% chance that it isn't. And I think you have to as an investor, I mean, if you're someone who's going to allocate, you know, someone, let's say 20 million portfolio with a 10%, you need to be aware of that. So I'm in the camp that there's always a chance. I, and, I, and I'll just say this, folks, is since I've invested since the late 90s, I have had plenty of stocks, and they were stocks back then, go bust or have massive down moves. And I've learned that nothing is infallible. Nothing is, is invincible. So I have to, from now on, I'm always that conservative trader that's thinking about the negative possibility to protect me. It's, it's the same reason I want to buy gold, is I don't have very much trust in the Federal Reserve and our government in terms of the debt. Um, the future looks bleak in terms of the dollar, and I want to be hedged against that. You know, I want to go to sleep at night knowing that if I wake up the next morning and there's been a dollar collapse, that I'm okay. There's a 100% chance that if you hold a U.S. dollars in cash, you will lose value in the next year. That's there's right. a 100% chance you will. But there is not a 100% chance you will lose value in Bitcoin. Think about it. But so, so this is, right. So yes, 8% inflation next year. That's what they're projecting. So you're going to lose 8%. But what if Bitcoin falls to 20,000? How much did you lose there? So what about, like again, going back to diversification, I don't mean to be a broken record, but a little bit in gold, a little bit in crypto, a little bit in stocks, a little bit here and there, and hopefully you can at least come out break even. Gareth Soloway summed up his Bitcoin plans in these comments. I remain a long-term bull on Bitcoin. In fact, when we broke $20,000 at $19K, I announced I started my beginning HODL position. And so, ever since we were at $65K, and even though I was bearish, I was always saying, listen, long term, there is a huge place in the economy in the world for Bitcoin, and I think we'll get there. And we'll get to 100K, 500K, maybe $1 million.
If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.